In the heart of the Middle East lies a region known to many as the Holy Land, a place significant to both Israelis and Palestinians who call it home. This land has seen countless chapters of human history, and today, it's the center of a long-standing conflict. The roots of the Israel-Palestine conflict stretch back many years. This area has been home to a mix of cultures and communities for centuries, each with their own unique connection to the land. Throughout this video, we'll explore key historical events, international decisions, and local movements that have shaped the reality on the ground. Our aim is to shed light on the complex issues at play and to foster a better understanding of the current crisis between Israel and Palestine. And if you are already aware about this whole conflict and want to know my thoughts, then please skip to the end chapter of my thoughts on the conflict. The story begins thousands of years ago, in a land revered by many, its history etched into the stones of ancient cities. The earliest known inhabitants of this land were the Canaanites, around 2000 BCE or even earlier. Their city-states dotted the landscape, each with its own ruler and deity. Over the centuries, this land saw the arrival of various groups, each leading their own imprint. Around 1200 BCE, the Israelites, believed to be a Semitic people, settled in the region. Their kingdoms of Israel and Judah had their center of power in Jerusalem. The conquests of empires changed the face of the region through time. The Assyrians, Babylonians, and later the Persians took control, each reigning over the land for a period. The conquest of Alexander the Great in 332 BCE ushered in the Hellenistic period, followed by the rule of the Roman Empire which further altered the region's religious and cultural landscape. The Roman period was a tumultuous time for the Jewish population. The destruction of the Second Temple in 70 CE following a failed revolt was a catastrophic event, leading to the dispersion of Jewish communities. This event, known as the Diaspora, saw many Jews dispersing to other parts of the Roman Empire and beyond, although a significant Jewish community remained in the land, enduring under changing rule. The Byzantine Empire, which followed Roman rule, continued to exert control over the region until the 7th century when Islamic Arab armies conquered vast territories, including this historic land. Under Islamic rule, which was generally tolerant towards people of the book a term referring to Jews and Christians, the remaining Jewish communities were allowed to practice their religion, although they were subject to certain restrictions. Over the ensuing centuries, the region would change hands multiple times among various Islamic empires, each bringing its own set of policies and attitudes toward local populations. Despite the long stretches of relative coexistence, tensions and conflicts did arise. Yet, through the ebb and flow of empires, both Jewish and Arab populations continued to maintain their distinct identities and connections to the land. As the ancient lands entered the modern era, they found themselves at the crossroads of empires, each with its own vision for the region. The Ottoman Empire, which had control over the land from the early 16th to the early 20th century, maintained a relatively decentralized system of governance, allowing a degree of autonomy to local communities. However, as the empire weakened, the winds of change began to blow across the region. The world was changing rapidly. The cries for national identity echoed through the empires, reaching the ears of both Jewish and Arab inhabitants who began to envision distinct national futures for themselves. World War I proved to be a turning point. The defeat of the Ottoman Empire opened the doors for European powers to carve up the Middle East. The British Empire, with the mandate from the League of Nations, took control over the land known as Palestine. The Balfour Declaration of 1917 was a significant milestone as it expressed British support for the establishment in Palestine of a national home for the Jewish people, stirring hopes among Jewish communities and fears among Arab inhabitants. Around this time, the demographic landscape of Palestine was predominantly Muslim, with significant Christian and Jewish communities. Various sources provide a glimpse into the religious demographics. 
A census during the early British Mandate period revealed a population of 650,000 Muslims, 87,000 Jews, and 73,000 Christians. Another estimate around the outbreak of World War I indicated a total population of 700,000 with the overwhelming majority being Muslim and significant populations of Christians and Jews. Under British rule, tensions between Jewish and Arab communities escalated. The increasing Jewish immigration fueled by the Zionist movement aimed at establishing a Jewish homeland clashed with the Arab population's aspirations for self-determination. The stage was set for a struggle that would intensify in the coming years. The contrasting visions for the land's future were now on a collision course fueled by international politics and the enduring hopes of two peoples. As the world emerged from the ashes of World War II, the quest for a solution to the Israel-Palestine question gained urgency. The United Nations, a newborn entity, took upon itself the task of finding a path to peace in the troubled land. The UN formed a special committee on Palestine to examine the situation and propose solutions. After months of deliberation, in 1947, the committee recommended the partition of Palestine into two separate states, one Jewish and one Arab, with Jerusalem as an international city. The proposal, known as the United Nations Partition Plan for Palestine, envisioned a complex division of territory. The Jewish state would comprise three parts, the Arab state three parts, and Jerusalem would stand as a corpus separatum, an independent entity under international control. The reaction to the partition plan was a mixed bag of hope, dismay, and outright rejection. While the Jewish leadership accepted the proposal, the Arab leadership, viewing it as an infringement on their rights to self-determination, rejected it outright. Tensions quickly boiled over into violence, with skirmishes erupting even before the plan could be implemented. As the British withdrew their forces, the landscape was rapidly transforming into a battleground. The UN partition plan marked a critical juncture in the history of the Israel-Palestine conflict. It was a plan born of hope for peaceful coexistence, yet it plunged the land further into turmoil. The contrasting reactions to the plan laid bare the deep-rooted mistrust and conflicting aspirations of the communities involved, setting the stage for a full-scale war that would forever alter the course of history in the region. The ink of the UN partition plan had barely dried when the storm of conflict swept across the land. The departure of British forces in 1948 opened the floodgates to a full-scale war known as the Arab-Israeli War or the War of Independence, depending on the perspective. The newly proclaimed State of Israel faced a coalition of Arab states. Despite being outnumbered, Israel managed to survive and even expand its territory. A series of armistice agreements in 1949 ended the fighting but not the conflict. The region saw no lasting peace as tensions simmered beneath the surface. The Suez Crisis of 1956 showcased the geopolitical intricacies involving not just the local actors but also international powers. The Six-Day War of 1967 was a monumental event. Israel captured the Gaza Strip, the Sinai Peninsula, the West Bank, including East Jerusalem, and the Golan Heights, drastically altering the map and the dynamics of the conflict. The Yom Kippur War of 1973 saw a surprise attack by Egypt and Syria to reclaim lost territories, leading to heavy casualties but eventually to a stalemate. Amidst the continuous cycle of conflict, there were glimmers of hope. The Camp David Accords in 1978, a framework for peace between Egypt and Israel, paved the way for the Egypt-Israel Peace Treaty of 1979, where Egypt recognized Israel, and Israel withdrew from the Sinai Peninsula. Later, the Israel-Jordan Peace Treaty of 1994 marked another significant milestone. Under this treaty, Jordan recognized Israel, and the two nations agreed on peaceful relations, delineating the border and ensuring security cooperation. The landscape of the region had been redrawn by wars, shifting alliances, and intermittent attempts at peace. Each conflict left indelible marks, shaping the narratives and the realities on the ground. Yet, 
the pursuit of a lasting peace remained elusive, a distant horizon amidst a turbulent sea of unresolved grievances and unfulfilled aspirations. The simmering tensions between Israelis and Palestinians were far from resolved. The grievances of the Palestinian people, under occupation and facing expanding settlements, reached a boiling point, giving rise to widespread uprisings known as the Intifadas. The first Intifada erupted in 1987, a grassroots movement characterized by widespread protests, boycotts, and clashes with Israeli forces. It was a cry for recognition, a demand for an end to occupation. The uprising led to a new chapter of diplomatic efforts. The Oslo Accords, signed in 1993, aimed to pave the way for Palestinian self-governance and a lasting peace. However, the agreements fell short of addressing the core issues, leaving many disillusioned. The year 2000 saw the eruption of the Second Intifada, a more violent and militarized uprising following the failure of the Camp David summit. This new wave of conflict took a heavy toll on both sides, deepening the mistrust and hardening the divides. The reverberations of the intifadas were felt far and wide. The hope for a peaceful resolution seemed to fade with every passing day as the cycle of violence and retaliation continued unabated. The intifadas were a stark manifestation of the enduring conflict and the deep-rooted frustrations of the Palestinian people. They marked pivotal moments in the narrative, highlighting the vast chasm between the aspirations of the two communities and the harsh realities on the ground. As we venture further into the recent past, the complex interplay of national and international forces continues to shape the destiny of this embattled land. As the calendar pages turned into the 21st century, the Israel-Palestine conflict remained an open wound on the global conscience. The quest for a peaceful resolution continued amidst a landscape scarred by decades of conflict. Numerous peace proposals and diplomatic efforts have been tabled over the years, each aiming to bridge the gaping chasm between the conflicting parties. Yet, mistrust, historical grievances, and geopolitical complexities have often thwarted progress. On the ground, the expansion of Israeli settlements in the West Bank and the blockade of Gaza exacerbated tensions. The daily lives of Palestinians and Israelis continue to be overshadowed by the specter of conflict. Recent escalations remind the world that the embers of discord are far from extinguished. Each spark of violence risks igniting a larger fire, a reminder of the volatile and fragile status quo. I have given much thought to this conflict and must say it is one of the most complicated issues I have read or heard about. Tracing back to the early roots of this conflict, which predates the end of World War II, the population in the region was predominantly Palestinian. The Zionist movement, aspiring to establish a state for Jews in Palestine, had been growing since the 19th century. So, when the British government proposed the creation of Israel, the first concern should have been the fate of the Palestinians. After all, one cannot simply claim another's land. Some might argue that a two-state solution was proposed by the UN, but if you were Palestinian, would you willingly cede half of your land? Yet, Jewish immigrants arrived from around the world and settled in Palestinian territories. In any other context, this would be deemed an invasion. I often wonder, why Palestine? Why not Germany, which perpetrated horrors against Jews? Or perhaps the self-proclaimed righteous America could have offered land? Why was it Palestine? There are basically two bases on which Israel is occupying Palestine. One could argue that this land belonged to the Jewish people thousands of years ago, which is true. However, one cannot claim territories today based on ancient ownership. If that were the case, Native Americans should demand the departure of all descendants of European settlers from America. If that were the case, the Lebanese, who are descendants of Canaanites, should ask the Israelis to depart from their land, since Canaanites were the first known inhabitants of this land. The logic of rectifying every ancient injustice is unsustainable. The second basis is Israel's victory in wars against Arab countries, 
which is also correct. Historically, humans have conquered neighboring and foreign lands. So, why should Israel's conquest of Palestinian lands be any different? Well, in modern times, conquest is no longer an acceptable means of acquiring territory, with few exceptions perhaps like Russia. Yet, Israel has progressively occupied more Palestinian lands over time. Is that the right thing to do? If one argues that occupation is justified because Israel can enforce it, then claiming victimhood seems disingenuous and claiming that Palestinians are terrorists just because they are fighting for their land is just arrogance. By now, you might think I am anti-Jewish, which points to the crux of the problem. Post-Holocaust, the world entered an appeasement mode, fearing to criticize Israel for its actions against Palestinians. The Jewish community suffered immensely during the Holocaust, no doubt. This level of persecution would understandably foster a strong desire for self-preservation. Yet, I find it baffling that Israelis could inflict upon Palestinians what the Nazis did to Jews, lacking empathy for the Palestinians' plight. However, it's crucial to also consider the Israeli perspective. The State of Israel was founded in the aftermath of the Holocaust, a period that left an indelible mark on the Jewish psyche. The collective trauma and the history of persecution have fostered a strong desire among Israelis for a homeland where they can ensure their security and sovereignty. Over the years, Israel has faced numerous security threats, including attacks from neighboring countries and terrorist groups, which have further entrenched the emphasis on security. Many in Israel see their government's actions as a necessary measure to protect Israeli citizens. Moreover, Israel has been recognized by the international community, and many Israelis believe they have a legitimate right to defend their nation. It's also worth noting that the narrative of an undivided stance within Israel oversimplifies the reality. Many Israelis advocate for peace and are involved in initiatives aimed at fostering Israeli-Palestinian understanding and cooperation. The desire for a peaceful resolution exists on both sides of the divide, albeit overshadowed by the actions of more extremist elements and the broader political discourse. The current crisis escalated when Hamas attacked Israelis, with horrifying reports of atrocities committed. Taking innocent lives is abhorrent, regardless of the method. This conflict has spanned decades, with more Palestinian children killed annually than Israelis killed by Palestinians in decades. It's disturbing to see people valuing Israeli children's lives over Palestinian children's. All loss of life is tragic, and atrocities committed by both sides should be condemned. So, what's the way forward? Palestinians have a right to resist occupation, yet expecting Israelis to vacate the land is unrealistic. Where would Israelis go? The most viable solution remains a two-state resolution. Although proposed for decades, it has never been properly implemented. If executed correctly, both parties could achieve peace, but compromise is essential. Without compromise, peace will remain elusive. That's all for this video. I hope you liked this video and if you did, please like, share and subscribe. And do not forget to let me know your thoughts in the comments section. Thanks for watching, have a good day ahead.